Hello, hello. Welcome back to our special edition Amberverse segment in which I will continue to cover what former cast member Dust Bowl is having to say regarding the relationship that took place with Amber Lynn several years ago. Seems to be this is going to be a weekly upload situation type deal. I would expect maybe one or two Destiny related videos a week until this river runs dry. Wonder how much she has to say. Will this be short lived or is she here for the long run? I will give you a bit of a heads up as you may have noticed by the runtime. This is a pretty long video. Destiny gives what is, in my opinion, some details that aren't really important to the main theme here. I found her rambling a bit about topics that had me yawning. It's normal to space out a bit during this video. If you end up falling asleep, however, I won't be offended. Just please have your CPAP mask on so your snoring won't bother the other gorls. Let's open our our history books and get started. For today's motorized scoot down memory lane, you will need a dehumidifier, friends that are older than 18, and an IUD. Clear your throat and wave one finger in the air because we are arguing our way back into the Amberverse. <laughs> hey guys, so I just wanted to start out with um, a couple things real quick, um, like maybe this might end up being a two part video because I don't want these videos to be like super long and a lot of stuff happened in 2016. I didn't realize that it was that busy of a year, but a lot, a lot of stuff happened in 2016. So <laughs> I don't want these videos to be too long. A 51 minute video. <laughs> um, there's a couple things that I was going to clear up from the last video. Or I guess just one thing. Yeah. Um, when I said Amber Lynn knew that I was secretly talking to my ex. Um. She did not know that till me and Dana broke up. And that's because I had told Dana about it. And when we broke up, I don't know why, but she told Amber Lynn. And <clears throat> I had every intention of telling Amber Lynn at some point. It was just like unnecessary drama after we broke up, clearly. And it was the day before I came, went to come here. I was literally at the pharmacy getting the prescriptions I was getting. And That's so weird. That is so weird. Dana, who had nothing to do with that runs and tells Amber Lynn about something that Destiny did back in 2016. Oh, by the way, Amber, when you were with Destiny, she was still talking to that girl at the time. You know, the one that she said that she was over with, one that she dated before you. Yeah, yeah, she was. And and then Destiny saying right here, I was going to tell her eventually. I, this is seven years ago. I mean, really, you, you guys like keep up on this? I, I can imagine what happened after Destiny and Dana broke up is Dana joined forces with Amber Lynn and they kind of like got in cahoots and is like dished and spilled the tea together. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, we're of the same faction now. It's like we are both people that dated Destiny. And now that we're broken up, we can both dislike her together. And like, that's how they bond I think it's weird, but I have seen that in other cases before where one person has dated someone and then they break up and then another person starts dating them. And then that person that broke up with them doesn't like the person, the new person that starts dating them. But then once they break up a second time, those two people become best friends because they now have something in common. It's, it's so stupid. <laughs> and she called me when I got in my car and she said, she just said it. She was like, you were talking to such and such the whole time that we were together. I was like, no, it wasn't the whole time we were together. And I said, obviously Dana told you that because she's the only person that knew. So clearly, you know, that was that. And she denied it. She tried to say that Dana didn't tell her. I was like, well, I've only ever told Dana. And she just kind of tried to skip over it, trying to figure out what I was doing. And I just kind of tried to end the conversation. So Dana's kind of crappy. I mean, what are you doing running your mouth to Amber Lynn after the way that you 
Kind of. I mean, I'm not sticking up for Destiny. I mean, clearly Destiny has her flaws, and clearly she wasn't perfect in that relationship and everything. But from the side that we got from Destiny, Dana didn't seem like she was very mature about the whole breakup. I mean, texting someone that you were together with for five years from the other couch cushion saying, you need to get out of here. And then the whole thing about, well, I don't know when you're going to be able to get your stuff. I'm not coming back there anytime soon. And just downloading Tinder, talking to other people. And then on top of that, you do all that. And then afterwards, you go and run your mouth to Amber Lynn and bring up a bunch of old skeletons in the closet. Dana, Dana, Dana. She did not know that whole time. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and we will get started with 2016. Okay, this seems like it's going to be the intro, like... Last time she did, it was that burp sound effect. I'm not doing that again. I caught it. Okay. I think, I think that, I think that we avoided it at this time. January of 2016. We got Twinkie. That was like right off the bat. One thing that we did. Um, Twinkie, I actually had, Twinkie was my dog's puppy. And my godmom took her because she wanted a puppy and then she I think she was trying to either have another baby or was pregnant with my god sister maybe not because we watched my god sister a lot that summer um so I think she was trying to have another baby and she was trying to she had so many animals that she had just taken in and was trying to downsize on her animals so she was trying to find good homes and she knew that we would take care of Twinkie so um let's see that also started our roommate drama um, with our roommate moving out and moving in with her boyfriend and her saying until we found another roommate basically that she would pay her part to try to be fair but she ended up getting really behind on it so we just figured it out for ourselves um I wish I could complain about how much that rent was now that was six years ago or something like that so Almost, well, it was longer than that, like seven years ago. But our rent included water, and that was it. And that was right at about $1,000. So, I mean, and we were only, we were at the assisted living facility, and we were only making, I was. I mean, so the the rent, is that is that all for all three of them, $1,000? Or was that just Amber Lynn and Destiny's portion? I mean, if that, if that was for all three people in a two-bedroom two bath i suppose i mean yeah i mean i mean considering location and everything but still i mean that's that's pretty good um so the 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 friend the jessica friend the one that's responsible for gracie allegedly getting out because she doesn't have a voice in all of this so they can just pin the blame on her i think her name's jessica cuz for the longest time i was just calling her the the stripper friend because that's what they were calling her but i think one of you in the comments told me that her name was jessica so Jessica gets a boyfriend and then she thinks, well, you know, I don't really want to pay this rent anymore. I'm just going to move in with him and then I won't have to pay rent at all. So uh, kind of just like placates Destiny and Amber Lynn and says, yeah, yeah, I'll help with the rent. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's only fair until you guys are able to find a new roommate. Left them high and dry. Like, <laughs> she might she might have paid like one month of rent after that, but it kind of seems like they were SOL. Making like eight fifty or eight seventy five, and she was making eight twenty five. So it was hard to live off of that, but we did it. It was all good. Um, or actually, I wrote I made nine. Isn't that insane? Eight. She said eight fifty, and then Amber Lynn was making eight twenty five or eight eight seventy five. I mean, that's that's crazy to be able to afford rent. And then I don't even know if their jobs included health insurance, food, utilities, gas, incidentals, just, oh my gosh. And then, I mean, just even after everything, like I think in Pennsylvania still, the minimum wage is seven twenty five. Isn't that wild? Just wild. That's what it was. I remember I had got a, I think that year going into 2016, I got up to nine. Um, we did get close to an eviction, 
um, trying to wait on our roommate to get her crap together, basically. And then we just ended up figuring it out and doing it. Um, Amberlynn did manage our money very well. I really don't understand how we were able to do everything that we would do, like going out to eat so much, going to Walmart so much, um, and still being able to pay all of our bills without worrying about anything. But then I also think about, I didn't have a car payment. I don't have a car payment now, but I didn't have a car payment. Um, I only had like insurance and we had our phone bill and then rent and water and lights. So it's still, it was a lot, but not as much as I think I have now. Um, then I know that she talked about me gaining weight at one point. Um, first of all, when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school, I was like a hundred pounds soaking wet. I was scrawny. Um, it's hard to believe for me at least. Um, but I was a scrawny little thing. I had gained a little bit of like baby fat in the eighth grade. And then when I went into high school, we had this class where it was like the majority of it was running. Like you had to build yourself up to run for 20 minutes straight. And I, lo I dropped a bunch of weight. So into my freshman year, which I'd always had an issue with my period, with the cramping and everything like that. Just so I could have those days for my period or most of the time I would just end up if I got it at school just end up going home trying to deal with it it usually only like nauseous or I would start to get really like kind of dizzy lightheaded type thing and I, all I had to do was text my dad and he'd have someone come get me because it it was bad so I think what got me to go get put on birth control because I didn't think birth control would help so I never thought hey I should try to go do that um and just let the water hit me and it kind of helped a little bit I started that shower and when I woke up, I don't know how it didn't wake me up before, but it was it was ice cold. Destiny, if you're watching this right now, girl, we we do we don't need all of this. I, I mean, I understand you know you want to say your side of everything, but like you you getting your period back in high school, I mean, th this really does not have anything to do with you you and Amber Lynn's relationship from 2016. L little little bit off track here. So I don't know really how long I was in there. Um, but it freaked her out enough to where we made myself an appointment and I got put on birth control and that birth control made me put on weight like crazy. Like I went from, I know I was a double zero at one point or a zero, like I was in between those and I went up to like, I think a six or an eight, like in a few months. And I was, I just like put it on so fast and that's when I quit. And then I've slowly just gained weight over the years more. Just, I'm a really picky eater. I don't eat good things, but I'm not that concerned about all that right now. Um. So we'll move on from that subject. Uh, I'm not a feeder. I don't know. I think she talked about that at one point saying something about people were saying I was. I'm not. I get no satisfaction out of seeing someone eat. Um, you know, every time that term has been brought up, ma mainly I've seen that. I mean, I've seen that term in our community too, but mainly I've seen that term with um, the Slayton sisters on that Thousand Pound Sisters show. Every time that term is brought up, feeder, someone who enjoys watching someone else eat, gets some type of gratification or pleasure out of it. It's always, I'm not that. I'm not, I'm not that. <laughs> I don't think I I have yet to meet anyone on any of these programs that has admitted to liking it. <laughs> it's it's always such a taboo thing. No one ever wants to admit that they actually enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, I remember watching um Tammy Slayton one time and the the one boyfriend at the time brings her this extra large sonic milkshake like over a thousand calories and you know is like, "Well, I'm not a feeder." It's like, sit, there's like a shot of him sitting on the couch, like watching her drink this milkshake. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amber Lynn did have a very bad attitude, just in general. Um, Just with anything, like if she wasn't kind of getting her way, if it just wasn't going the way she wanted to do it. Like this was as long as I've known her, not just when we were together and even after, so... Um, Twinkie was overweight when we got her. Mm, so Amber Lynn was a bit of a diva. She wanted what she wanted. And you know what? The thing that I liked about her and Destiny's relationship is Destiny gave it back to her. She didn't just, you know, lay down like a dog on its back and you just let Amber Lynn walk all over. It, it, no, Destiny kind of threw it back and it was like, 
no, I, I'm not dealing with this. That's BS. You know, you have, I could imagine that they fought a lot because in Berlin is a very forceful personality, kind of like a very overbearing person. And I don't think that Destiny puts up with that crap. I mean, maybe a little bit to just uh, placate her, but I, I, I'd imagine that they did fight a lot. So that's funny to hear that Amber Lynn was a handful. Her, she, uh, my godmom had a bunch of dogs and they just all ate out of the same bowl, I'm pretty sure. Like she just left food out all the time. So Twinkie, we put her on a diet and she got to a healthy weight. Um, I let Amber Lynn keep Twinkie, obviously, because I don't, she just was drawn to Amber Lynn more. I didn't want to take her from her. Um, and she also kept Wasabi and Rarity. Um, Rarity, we had just got her around the time we broke up. And then Wasabi, you know, I don't know, like that. She always wanted a cat named Wasabi. Like, I just let her keep the animals because they, they were hers. Except for Jax. <laughs> I did, once me and Dana actually, like, moved in, moved in together, um, I did take Jax with me. And he was there for a little while. He ended up being an outside cat there because he had never been outside like that in his life since, until, like, right before we got him, obviously. Um, cause my mom found him, uh, and he was, I kept him inside and he got out that night. It scared me cause I was like, he's never been outside. He doesn't know what to do. Well, he was gone for like an hour and then he just scratched at the door and wanted in and he just kind of became an in indoor outdoor cat and was doing really good for a little while. And then I don't know how it happened, but Becky's mom ended up with him at some point. And then she got, she wanted me to have him back because I think he kept going to the bathroom on her welcome mat or something. I don't know. I think she wanted him for like a barn cat or something. I don't remember what it was, but I got him back. And then um, when I moved, when we moved to Florida, when me and Dana moved here. Jeez, was this the community cat? I mean, it was with Amber Lynn and Destiny, and then it was with Destiny and Dana. And then somehow Amber Lynn, Destiny's ex, her girlfriend's mom ended up with this cat. <laughs> I mean, this cat has seen more of Kentucky than I ever will. <laughs> um, we had no one to keep our animals, obviously, and we couldn't bring them with us. It was really sad. But my mom took Jackson, and he was an indoor-outdoor cat there. And my mom just lived in the middle of the woods, basically. And he went outside one day, and then he just never came back. So we really don't know what happened to him. He could be at somebody's house. He could have got ran over. I really don't know. I was really sad about it, obviously, when my mom told me. But there was Okay, I'll preface this with I've never had a cat. I, I know that cats some sometimes are just kind of like, you know, they kind of go out and they do cat things and then they come back for dinner. And then, like, that's just the way that they live their life. But I, I don't know. Just from a perspective of what I've heard about Gracie and now with this, it's like, oh, well, you know, one day, like, you know, a door's open and then we never heard. I mean, should, should there be a little bit more responsibility on the owner to try to keep the cat out of harm's way? I mean, or are cats unpredictable? I mean, if I don't know, let the cat people have to let me know because I've I've never owned a cat, but it just seems like like now with Gracie and now Jax, it's like, well, you know, I got out one day, never heard from him again. I mean, this has happened now twice. <laughs> it's like I don't think that this is supposed to be happening. <laughs> There's not a lot we could do about that. Um, let's see. Amberlynn started Weight Watchers again in January. We started hanging out with... That's when we really started hanging out with Libby. Um, she was 15 at the time. And that was our roommates that screwed us over. That was her little sister. Now, I've known them pretty much my whole life. Like, me and my roommate met each other in the second grade. But we didn't become, like, BFFs or whatever till middle school. So, me being in, like, sixth grade, Libby had to be, like, first, second grade. Something like that. And I just... I've known them, like, my whole life. And I practically lived with them in high school. So... At that point, Destiny was like, what, 19, 19 or 20, and Amber Lynn was older than Destiny, 21, 22, and they were hanging out with a 15-year-old? That's kind of strange. Because, cause, you know, people don't really have a big stink about, like, I don't know, like a 23 and a 27-year-old hanging out, for instance, but... Those those developmental years are very different. I think that there is a huge difference between a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old. And I think that there's a huge difference between a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old. So, 
19 and 15 hanging out. Okay. Um, let's see. I was still having issues with the acid reflux. Um, I had gone to the hospital again, and they tried to say that it was me eating a lot, like eating out a lot. And so I tried not to, but I mean, we did a lot, so I couldn't really do too much about it. I just tried to take Tums as much as I could. Um, they gave me this nasty medicine to drink, and it literally like numbs you all the way down. I've had to drink that stuff a couple times. That's awful. It's literally like liquid toothpaste. <laughs> it's gross. Um, I guess she talks about me losing the pigment in my skin at one point. I have, I'm not going to show it to you right now, but it goes like a chalky kind of thing you mean like i mean I, i've taken like carafate before i have this i have this uh issues with acid acid, acid oh my god i can't talk acid reflux did she call it reflux or reflex because in the last video she called it acid reflex <laughs> um you know what's good for acid reflux not reflex is uh my lanta it's over the counter I really liked my Atlanta. I keep it refrigerated. I don't think that you have to, but I have also been that person that took Tums constantly. I saw a lot more relief with my Atlanta. Um, it's it's like a little uh, turquoise bottle. They sell it at any drugstore. I really recommend that. Just you know, if this piqued your interest. From my belly button to the middle of my back, just on this this side of me, but it just loops around, and it's just a white pigmented part. You know, it's like whiter than my skin, um, and it doesn't tan or anything. Um, I was put in a hot tub when I was six months old and I don't know, it just kind of happened. My mom took me to the doctor and I mean, it was 1995, 96 and he said to put cell some blue on it. Maybe it would bring it back, but I don't know if she actually tried that, but that's all I know is I was put in a hot tub and after I got out of the hot tub, it was just a mark was there. So I wasn't born with it. Um, and we went to Walmart incredibly too much. I really don't understand why we went to Walmart so much. It's ridiculous. Um, and then it's because they didn't have anything to do. I mean, we have talked about this. There have been reactions of mine where I have asked you guys, I mean, is Walmart somewhere that you hung out growing up? Because if you're living in like a small town in Kentucky like this, where there isn't really much to do other than maybe go out to eat, drive around or go to Walmart. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, unless you go to someone's house, hang out drink beer, smoke cigarettes. I mean, like, I feel like it, I've never lived in the country like that, but I'd imagine there isn't too much to do. So I feel like that's why they went to Walmart so much. And you guys have said that too. I mean, it is, it's like the place to hang out and everything. I'd imagine that those businesses get a little bit annoyed um, just with kids kind of just like loitering around the store and everything. Um, I know that some of the malls around here have that issue and it, it became such an issue like on Friday nights and stuff like under the age of 16, you weren't allowed in the mall without a parent because <laughs> that's what that's what parents would do. It's like, like, I, I don't want to have to deal with you for the night. Go walk around the mall for hours with your friends. And, you know, they, they'd walk around and they'd get in trouble. They're bored. I mean, it's not like they have money to spend, really. They would just, you know, get like a lemonade and run around to get into trouble and you know, cause problems. So I think that they went to Walmart a lot just because there wasn't really much else to do. About me riding the carts in Walmart, um, I rode them when I was with her because she was embarrassed riding them by herself. So she would make me ride one too to make her feel better. Um, then we get to February of 2016. Oh, she made her ride the motorized scooters. That's interesting. I mean... It's one thing if you have a partner that's physically unable to get around, so they want this little cart. Um, I don't know. Destiny, I guess, could have stepped up and said, all right, like right, I'll ride one with you too so you don't feel so self-conscious. But kind of sounds like Destiny was fine walking on her own around Walmart. So Amber Lynn kind of strong-armed her into it and made her ride around in the motorized scooter too because it's like, well, if we both look ridiculous, if we both look lazy, then I won't feel as bad. But if I'm riding around in a scooter and you're walking, I'll look bad. <laughs> you have to look bad with me. Ooh. She goes through a vegan phase. It didn't last very long, and towards the end of it, she was just eating Fritos and Oreos because technically they're vegan. Um, I kept going back and forth wanting my hair cut. I know I did that. <laughs> she 
said it no said no, nonchalantly too. Yeah, she went through a vegan phase, but toward the end of it, she was just eating Fritos and Oreos because technically that's vegan too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i love girl world that, um a tornado hit our apartment and then a week later well the first one it just missed our apartment the second one is the one like a week later it really messed up our apartment um let me see that was when our apartment that second one that was when the apartment got damaged we didn't have power for almost 24 hours um and that's that had to have been when our apartment started to have the issue with the flooding it hadn't flooded in there yet but that had to have been how the leak was going to occur is what i'm trying to say um we went on vacation with my mom around this time to a fancy hotel in destin and then we also i remember that video that was one of the first videos i ever made as a reaction channel um was amber lynn and destiny going on a vacation to destin together it was a nice hotel it was like you know a nice little resort or whatever there was a lot of footage of them on the beach doing stuff amber lynn was really a part of the family at that point and i think that at that point she had felt like her transition from being under the care of crystal's parents to now being incorporated with destiny and they were kind of standing on their own two feet well, except for when they were at Walmart, had occurred. So Amber Lynn felt involved and incorporated into the family. She was going on vacation. She knew everybody. They liked her. She liked them. So I feel like that was a pivotal point in season three where Amber Lynn was like, okay, we've gone through the hard part of me giving up everything that I was comfortable with when I was with Crystal, and I've kind of made it now. I'm, I'm in it. So we're trying to think of finding another place, like going ahead and just apartment searching, going ahead and get on the ball with it. Then we get into March. Um, we That's when we really started hanging out with Libby a lot. And that's also when we met Nick. I know you guys saw Nick in a couple of videos towards like the end. Um, we met him at a Chinese restaurant. He re literally just came up to us, said, I have crippling anxiety. I try to beat it every day. Can I stay with you guys and just talk? And we ended up being at the Chinese restaurant for like a few hours just talking. And his parents were with him and they they left like 30 minutes after he came and sat with us and i asked him where he lived and i i knew exactly where it was at so i was like i'll take you home it's no big deal like i wasn't worried about it he seemed all right but we ended up um going well i wonder how old he was so it's destiny who's 19 or 20 amber lynn who's in her early 20s the 15 year old friend of the, sorry the 15 year old little sister of the friend roommate that ditched them on the rent and now someone that approached them in a Chinese restaurant. Went to the beach. <laughs> and, I don't and then these two met on the internet. In interesting little conglomeration of people. <laughs> I don't know how, but I guess Libby had her ukulele with her. Like maybe we picked her up from her house and then we went to Chinese food because she lived where the Chinese food place was. So I guess that's how she had it. And then we ended up just sitting on the beach and listening to him singing and play the ukulele and Libby trying to as well. Um, this is also when we were really trying to look for another place. Um, that's also when we started eating at that Chinese restaurant we met Nick at way too much. I swear we were going like every other day. And this is also when we decided to move to Kentucky with my mom. Now, I know there was a couple of things with that. Oh my gosh. Um, I, those, those Chinese buffets can be so bad. I mean, just so, those, those grab a plate and fill it up, dress your plate with whatever you want. I mean... I used to have a friend that would go to those very frequently and oh god I just I mean are they still popular do you guys have those in your areas you know, you know what I mean it's like the the grand china buffet like I swear I see those all over the country like no matter where I am it's always the grand china buffet you just get a plate walk in you pay well, I, I don't know I haven't been to one in years but I'd imagine with inflation now it's like the admission is probably at least like twelve dollars so you just go in, you eat whatever you want, eat out your heart's content. And then, just, I mean, if you're going to that every day, I mean, and they, they spent hours at it. She just said that they were, they were at it for like, what, two hours. <laughs> I mean, a lot of damage can be done in two hours at one of those buffets. And they, and they went frequently. Oh, and on top of that, they don't, they didn't have anything to do. She just said, they also said they were at Walmart constantly because they really didn't have any, anywhere to go or, you know, anyone to hang out with. So I guess to fill the void of time, it was walking around Walmart and going to those China buffets where you pay an admission fee. And then it's kind of like, all right, well, however long and however much you want to eat, I mean, it's up to you.
that was why we moved to Kentucky. Uh, essentially, it boiled down to I just wanted to be there. Um, my dad is the one that raised me. I went to my mom's. Like I only saw her two and a half months out of the year. I saw her during the summer, and then they took turns with Christmas. So sometimes I only see her two months out of the year. If I didn't see her for Christmas, if I saw her for Christmas, then I'd get two weeks with her then. So, and that was my choice. Um, there was just a lot of stuff that happened when I was younger that I'm not going to get into right now that made me not want to live with her. Um, like being dunked in a hot tub at six months old? Like like that? Yeah, I, I might reconsider as well. Um, and I just, I had made a life living with my dad, so I didn't want to just up and move. But as an adult, I really wanted that time with my mom. And looking back at it now, I'm glad I did so. Um, we showed Nick singing a lot. And then we started packing as well. And that's also when the Lego collection started. I don't collection. It was literally just two of the multi-brick boxes, it was, you know, like the big boxes. It wasn't like we were getting sets. And we just kind of had them all on the kitchen table a lot and just played with them. You know, um, my mom did have some health issues going on. I want to say it was, she had a hernia. God, don't get me started on a hernia. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, I think she had a hernia and she was getting it fixed. So that's. What was that supposed to mean? Don't get me started on a hernia. Cause we've heard about a hernia from Amber Lynn really recently. So was that a nod to Amber Lynn or was, uh, huh? What do you mean? Don't get you started. I kind of want to get you started. What do you mean by that? That's what that is. It was one of her health issues. I think she had a couple other things going on. I know she was trying to get pregnant at one point, and um, unfortunately, she kept getting pregnant in her tubes, and that was going on. So she had some stuff going on. So she did have some issues. And also in April, I don't know if I already said we were in April, that was when we announced that we were going to move to Kentucky. You know, what kills me about Destiny is she'll say, like, you know, I, I don't want to get into anybody's business too much. Like, it'll be about, like, Amber Lynn's diet, for example. Like, you know, she she was doing Weight Watchers, but I don't really want to talk about that too much. I don't want to get in her personal life. But then other things, they'll be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, she was having issues in her fallopian tubes. And, you know, we had to, like, like girl, w where is the line here? I, I mean, you're bowing out when we get to, like, level two with certain topics. But with others, it's like 10. <laughs> Just doesn't think anything of it. I mean... <laughs> She's she's really using her discretion when uh, t so talking about certain things. Kentucky, and where we would be staying, and that's also when we started hanging out with Libby a lot more than I guess we already were. Um, that's also around the time that my dog Kona, who's in a couple of videos, that's when he passed. Um, Libby's birthday was in this month, and she got her license and she got a car. Uh, also, at this point, Amberlynn only had two thousand subscribers, so that tells you where she was at. I don't think at 19 or 20, I would have been hanging out with 16 year olds at that point. Mm. That's just a little strange to me, especially for Amber Lynn, because Amber Lynn was older than Destiny. So, I mean, if she was in her early 20s, I mean, that's just kind of weird to me. I mean, like a 20, I don't know. I don't know the exact age difference, but if Amber Lynn was 22 or 23 and she was hanging out with a 16 year old, 15 when they met, that's that's strange to me at this point of the year i think i wrote down a couple of more of these like as she's announcing how much how many followers she has um this is also around the time our room it flooded the first time now we did call maintenance and it took them a couple days to come out and they shot back and left that humidifier there um it did make a loud noise at one point and we did tell them about it and they said it would do that like so but we would turn it we would unplug it when we were sleeping because it was so loud um but pretty much every time it rained they like i said they left the humidifier there every time it rained they would just come and shot back it they wouldn't try to figure out where the leak was coming from they wouldn't when you use a, I I mean, she might just be messing this up, just like the acid reflux and acid reflux thing. But if your apartment is flooding and they need to come, wouldn't they do a, wouldn't they be using a dehumidifier, not a humidifier? I mean, I, I'm not claiming to be a handyman here, but I don't think that you'd want to be adding more water into the little area <laughs> through a humidifier. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. And try to fix it. Nothing. They just shot back. And eventually mold grew all in that room. Um, and we had to move everything out of that room. Wait, they, they really couldn't catch a break. I mean, the the roommate who was a, willing to pay a third of the rent or whatever up and leaves them. And then they have all this issues with tornadoes hitting their apartment. And now they have flooding. <laughs> On top of being strained financially, making like eight fifty an hour. I mean, they, they really couldn't catch a break. Room into the living room so it didn't get ruined. Um, this is also around the time, uh, 
our boss got a letter from a subscriber about us vlog or about us but about Amber Lynn vlogging at work um she really did laugh she thought it was hilarious she didn't know that we had been doing YouTube or that Amber Lynn had been doing it um and it, it cracked her up she just said people sometimes people have nothing better to do with their life and probably just wanted to see the reaction out of it so this is also around the time that some subscribers started getting kind of creepy you know started trying to figure out like exactly where we live stuff like that um you know who recently freaked out about that was uh, Chantal. Chantal over on Foodie Booty, Chantopolis side of Girl World. Um, she moved apartments recently, and this this goes on a lot more with Foodie Booty side of Girl World that I that I've noticed in comparison to the Amber side of Girl World. But um, in terms of the whole real life thing and like you know calling people's parents and calling people's work and the apartment complex they live at and like things like that that goes on a lot more in the foodie booty side of girl world i have personally noticed but that happened recently with chantal like i i think what happened was she moved to this new apartment like this was all like this is all current like within a week's time she moved to this new apartment and someone changed the name of the apartment complex on google maps i don't even know how you do this but they pinned the location where chantal is living at in the middle east and they named it like the luxury fart box <laughs> And yes, it's funny. Like, uh, yes, yeah, so I am going to laugh that, like, calling her apartment the luxury fart box and everything. But I mean, that's someone's business. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> girl world doesn't need to bleed into the lives of business owners and things like that. So, little inappropriate, guys, girls, whoever did that, little, little inappropriate. I'm slapping you on the wrist. I highly doubt that person's watching my video, but... <laughs> My grandpa had a stroke around this time of the year, uh, visited him. He's fine now. It's, it was, it was a rough patch, but he's, he's all good now. Uh, let's see. We talked about Libby's age and the relationship we had with her. I know some people try to say that Amber Lynn had a thing for Libby. She did not see Libby like that. They were just very close. Um, Amber Lynn. You know, maybe I need to, and you guys can let me know in the comments, but maybe I need to go back and look into this whole Libby thing because this is very strange to me. Just just hearing about it, I mean, the amount of time that they were spending together, being friends with someone with that age, it's just weird to me. Very weird. Like, I don't think that a 23-year-old and a 15 or 16-year-old should be hanging out, just personally. Did get some kind of infection in her eye because she shared makeup with Libby. I guess that was important. It's in here. Um, still trying to pack up the apartment, uh, subscribers are getting super creepy. Me talking about traveling to Kentucky for the first time on my own. I had never driven even on the interstate when we were going to do that. Um, and I was talking about how I was nervous. This is around the time we got our 3DS and 2DS. I don't really remember. It was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. We got those. Um, she started t talking about her mukbangs. I don't know how, if I'm saying that word right. I don't know. It's said so many different ways. So. Um, I guess we read you guys the email from the subscriber that was sent to our boss. So that's probably when Amber Lynn started to pick up the momentum with making money on YouTube was when she started to do the mukbangs because Amber Lynn has been quoted saying, if I really wanted to make more money, if I really wanted more subscribers, if I really wanted to get more views on this website, I would be doing mukbangs. So the fact that we know that she's at 2,000 uh, subscribers at this point in time, and she isn't really making money off of those vlogs of them at the nursing home or wherever they worked at, she's doing the mukbangs. And um, for some reason, people like to watch other people eat, and, you know, that draws in a lot of views. So I'd imagine it was at this time when Amberlynn started to see an increase in revenue, and it stopped being so important. And, you know, they, they, had, they didn't really have to count every penny anymore. Let's see. Amberlynn had talked about her younger brother, about when she saved him, when he was getting choked. That really did happen. I don't know if there was, like, a conspiracy on that, but that did happen. Uh, that's also when we started taking Twiggy to work with us a lot. She just would chill, and the, the residents loved it. Um, let's see, I think this is on the, There's a lot that happened in April, actually. This is also when we tried to say that we thought our lease was going to be up. I think it was May 7th. And we were going to just put everything in storage and stay with my grandma. But when we went to put in our notice, they tried to say that we had to have a 90-day notice. 
and I was kind of upset about that. I mean, would it the lease at some point become void if a tornado hits it and it starts leaking water in everywhere and grows mold? I mean, there's got to be some type of exclusion. I mean, they, they really just did not have much luck with this apartment. I mean, the the roommate bowed out on him. They hit an... Uh, boy. I mean, at that point, I, I would have just go like, oh, let me get out of there. So, um, I called my dad just because he, he knows a lot of stuff about that kind of stuff. So, I called him, talked to him about it. He came down there and he said, well, first of all, I've never heard of you having to really do a 90-day, you know, like notice that you're going to be moving out. Maybe 60, but it's usually like around 30. He, he was like... And he did say it was our fault for not paying attention, but he also said it said in our lease that they were supposed to notify us when there was 90 days left, and they did not, so it was also their fault. Um, our apartment flooded really bad at this point, too, and it, this was, we were talking to them right after this, and explaining that there was, we couldn't, we didn't really need to be in that apartment, but we didn't have anywhere else to go, but there was mold growing all in that room, so we had to keep it closed off, and we were just worried about it just spreading to the whole place. Um, and then the bra scandal. I don't think she even has these bras anymore, but the bras that you guys would always give her crap for for wearing, she only had two of them. I don't remember how many she said she had, but she had two of the same exact bra because it was the only one that she liked and it fit her, whatever it was. She had them for a long time. The apartment started to look very rough at this point just because we had to live out of the living room. Let's see. This is also towards the end of April is when she really started to do a lot of the mukbang videos. Um... Amberlynn really did go to college when she lived in Arizona. I'm not going to get too much into detail with it, but um, she did have student loans. When she started working with me, about two or three months after she started working, they started to garnish her wages for it. So she ended up calling them and setting up a payment plan with them. Let's see. Yeah, they'll get you. They will get you one way or another with those student loans. If you don't pay it, if you try to avoid it, just say, I ain't paying those. I don't use the degree. I don't care. They'll get you eventually. They'll find you and they'll track you down. So if you, if you just let that outstanding balance just kind of, you know, dangle in the middle of the air like an ankle, I, they they will. They'll come for their money. So they garnished her wages. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine you are making $8 an hour. Your apartment is flooding. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to like paint a picture where it's like, woe is them. You know, I'm not throwing them a pity party. I'm just saying like, you're making $8 an hour. You're living in an apartment that is habitually flooding. And then on top of that, they're garnishing your wages on a degree that you didn't use. Or or she didn't complete. <laughs> yeah, not, not the best circumstance. Um, this is when I got the pet tree frog. I think his name was Free. Um, I talked about how I wanted a Pac-Man frog. Man, I still want a Pac-Man frog, but I just, it's a lot of effort and... And I, I don't know, just personally, personally, I mean, if you had all of this going on, all of the financial strain and the living situation and work and everything, it's like... They 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 always have an influx of pets. Have you guys noticed that? It's like, oh, well, you know, we got this cat, and then oh, you know, my mom's litter happened, and we took in Twinkie, and then oh, I got a tree frog. It's it's like all of this is going on, and you guys are undertaking the responsibility of being pet owners. <laughs> it's like the the two don't go together. <laughs> Not saying that I wouldn't want to do it, but I don't know, just. I've never just done it. It's just a lot of work. Um, with that frog keeping it, um, we argued about that for me keeping it, which was kind of on my end of my fault. I shouldn't have tried to keep a tree frog from outside. Like I didn't really, like I was just saying with a Pac-Man frog, it's a lot of work, you know, it's this, that, and the other. So, you know, we argued about it a lot though. I, I have never heard of anyone domesticating a tree frog. First of all, I don't know if I've ever seen a tree frog in person, <laughs> let alone having one as a pet. I've, I've never heard of anyone having a, a tree frog or just a frog in general as a pet. Do you have you do any of you have frogs as pets or know people that have frogs as pets? I mean, I know people that have I, even me. I had a turtle. I had a turtle named Chester and then. I didn't think that it was a very, it didn't really make for a very good pet in my opinion. It's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm not a reptile p kind of person, but, you know, just didn't go well with old Chester.
But yeah, the the frog kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah, y'all can let me know on that one. And then she finally just let me do it, and then we ended up letting him go. So, um, you see me go to my first gynecologist appointment, and I explained my cramping and cysts and stuff. Then got an X-ray and an ultrasound. That ultrasound, when you think of an ultrasound at a gynecologist, you think of one on your belly, you know, like or on your uterus. No, it was a, I don't know how to say it, in utero one, and that hurt. Especially because she kept shoving it to my, this is my left, she kept shoving it to the left side. This is what I'm talking about. You know, we, we don't want to delve into like little minor details about things that, you know, might overstep on someone's privacy. But, you know, talking about the, the first gyno appointment, well, she was shoving this up in there and that in there. And, you know, she took a right hook and that really hurt. And I'm like, <laughs> where is the line? Where does the line get drawn? <laughs> so I think she could find my left fallopian tube. I don't know. It really hurt. And she ended up finding it and stopping um, this is when she talks about living in Oklahoma. She did live with her aunt at first and her mom, and then they moved in with her grandma, her and her mom did. She went to visit the person she was with at the time in Arizona. She was only supposed to be there a month, ended up living there because her grandma said she couldn't come back. Um, like I said, I'm not going to try and get into that that much. I don't know that much on that kind of stuff. You know, like the whole scandal with the person that lived in Arizona and her. I don't know. I only know what she told you guys because that's what she told me. So I'm not going to get into that. Um, let's see, let's see, um, I think this is what Amber Lynn had talked about, I think someone asked her about who she would want to propose, like if she wanted to, or if I wanted to, and she was saying hopefully I would want to, I never proposed to her because we literally fought so much, and I wasn't sure if we would ever truly be happy together, like because there was just so much fighting and tension obviously off camera. Um, we'd have good times, but the bad times were starting to outweigh the good times. Outweigh. Operative word. So, um, it's, I guess it's good that she had the wherewithal to realize, I mean, you know, maybe I shouldn't commit myself to this person for the rest of my life if all we do is fight. Because I think a lot of people think that. It's like, well, you know, we have all these issues, you know what we should do to fix all these issues instead of going to therapy or talking them out or working on them day by day? You know what will really fix it? Let's get married! <laughs> Let's tie our finances and our lives together. That'll make everything better. Listen, the wedding, that'll be so much fun. We'll go into a little bit of debt because weddings are expensive, but it'll all be worth it. We will celebrate our love and it will emphasize our connection with one another and we'll be stronger than ever and we'll stop fighting, right? And I also know people that have uh, done the whole let's save the marriage by having a baby thing. And what's crazy about me is they're dysfunctional with two or three kids. And it's like, well, you know, let's let's have another. Let's have a fourth kid. That's what will really save the marriage. Like, I just don't know what goes through people's heads sometimes. It, 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 it's like, let's let's add on more responsibility to a failing dysfunctional relationship. So it, it is good to hear now that Destiny um, didn't think, to, you know, to just, like just blindly fix it with marriage. Because um, there was a point where she was with Dana and they were having a lot of problems too. And I remember seeing text messages where it was like, Dana, Dana texted Destiny and was like, I, I think I really want to have a baby. And this was like, after they were already having a lot of problems and destiny texts her back like oh yes i think you're right i think that that's exactly what we need i mean just like oh my gosh so i mean destiny wasn't you know fully fully i mean they didn't of course they didn't have a baby but dana's pregnant right now but besides the fact besides the fact all that i mean just they think that like these extremes will fix the relationship i just i, I don't know why people think that way uh, this is also around the time we started having some drama with her aunt. Her aunt essentially just became very upset with her and blocked her on everything because she was never sticking to any diets and she was constantly basically self-destructing herself. You know, she was constantly, and I mean, she's still obviously dealing with that now. So I don't know how her and her aunt's relationship is now, but it is what it is. Uh, we were trying to spend time with Libby and Nick. Nick and I still kept in touch while once I once we moved away. 
and at one point i want to say it was after me and Averlyn had broke up but he had moved to indiana and i think we were trying to meet up at one point but i'm not sure like if he was saying he was going to and then we ended up not i don't know but i actually just talked to him the other day about some stuff so um i think he lives he lives in ohio now actually this is also when we started to train our replacements for our job <laughs> i said i swear we went to walmart more or we spent more time at walmart than we spent at home this is also when she i mean they didn't have anything to do i mean if they didn't really have a group of friends except for the 16 year old nick but i mean if nick had moved by then i mean Really, what did Destiny and Amber Lynn have to do with each other? I mean, I guess sit at home and watch movies or watch TV, but I mean, you can only do that for so long. So they're, they're going out, their social life, their nightlife, their big highlight of the day was Walmart. She started making her suit. And there is a lot, there is a lot, a, a lot of footage of them at Walmart back in season three. A lot of them just... They, they do. They just walk around. They touch everything. They they go in the little bike aisle and they try on helmets. Just every, everything. Everything. Chili. Everything in a pot goulash stuff. I did not ever really try these. They were, that was gross. Um, and this is also, we found out what prison her mom had went to and she started, you know, trying to get a hold of her all that. Um, leaving our jobs was really sad. That was my first job I ever had. Um, it really did stink. You know, I loved that job. Um, I'm definitely not in the career to, to be taking care of people anymore. I mean, I'm just, that was my first job and I kept doing that kind of job and, you know, you just get burned out on that kind of stuff. Um, Amberlynn talked about being nervous about living with my mom. Because um, yeah, I, f I feel like those jobs that like daycare workers, teachers, nurses aides, cnas like those kind of jobs i feel like those people are worked very hard but are just continuously paid like nine dollars an hour it, it, it's i mean they they do i mean they have people's lives in their hands i mean school teachers are arguably some of the most influential people on the development of children i mean a lot of kids don't grow up and go to college or pursue any you know post high school education or anything so i mean any type of like guidance a person receives in life. I mean, it typically comes from those K through 12 years. I mean, especially if the parental figure is absent. So I'm all for teachers being paid for what they're worth. Is what I'm trying to say here. I know she didn't bring up teachers, but that's just something that also came to mind. I mean, I've had, I've had friends that have worked at daycares and, you know, as like CNAs at nursing homes and stuff. And it, it's insane. It is insane how much these uh, daycares and how much the nursing homes charge these people. I mean, it, it's like what, like $5,000 a month to live in a nursing home or something. And I mean, you're bringing in all this revenue and you're paying the employees like $8 an hour. It, it's just insane because she liked living on her own, didn't want to be under someone else's rules, wanted to do what she wanted to do, that comes to a Same with daycare. If any of you have a kid right now that you put in daycare a few days a week or maybe even five days a week, let me know. Like, how much do you, How much is daycare? Seriously. I, I, I know, like, it's... It's a little bit less expensive the older the kid is. Like if you put like a five-year-old in daycare versus like a newborn, the newborn is like very expensive to put into daycare. I mean, and then, you know, you see all these articles now. You see all these articles online. It's like people aren't having kids. It's like, well, you know, you don't wonder why. It's because mom and dad are being paid $8 an hour. Ahead at one point. Um, this is also when, I don't know why, but she was trying to eat less meat. We were getting ready for my mom and stepdad and a lot of my family to come down because my sister was graduating and we were getting the U-Haul and getting everything ready to move. We stayed at a beach house for about four days. Um, when it came to the U-Haul, we were worried about it, you know, paying for it because that's when U-Hauls were expensive. When I had to get one, when we moved to Kentucky the second time, it was only like a couple hundred dollars. But um, the U-Haul, when we got this one, we even got a budget truck trying to make it cheaper. It was still so much. Her foster mom, the last foster mom she had before she turned 18, that was she was with for a long time. She ended up helping us with that. So there was that. Uh, Libby and my cousin. Hmm, so Amber Lynn was calling in some old favors. Okay. I mean, 
props to that woman. I mean, that woman did her part. Amber Lynn was an adult by then. She called she called this woman back up and, you know, after like what? How old was Amber Lynn at this point? Like 23 or 24? After five years, she called her up and said, hey, do you think you could help us out with this U-Haul? And the, and the woman did. That's awesome. You know, I, I feel like with foster parents, a lot of, I don't want to say a lot of, some, some foster parents just kind of view it as a way to have some supplemental income and it, it isn't really a job to them. But there are some foster parents out there that really go above and beyond. That's, that's. That's pretty nice. That was that's pretty nice to her because I mean at that point I mean she didn't owe anything to Amber Lynn. She could have easily been like, "Honey, who are you again?" Honey, what? So I mean the fact that she was willing to give Amber give Amber Lynn money all those years later, but that really helped them. I like to hear that. Cousin Tyler, uh, they hit it off kind of good. You know they liked each other, whatever for a little while. I don't think they ever worked together or anything. But my cousin obviously went back with us when we went to Kentucky. And he joined the Marines. But he did say that he tried to keep in touch with her. Let's see. Um, and then we go to June. I drove to Kentucky. The drive was pretty, it was, it was okay. The only thing that sucked is my car at the time didn't have cruise control. So that sucked. Um, so it was just a matter of holding down the gas for so long. And my foot was getting tired, but that's about it. And Wasabi was kind of irritated, but it was okay. I got very emotional when we went to leave as well, like before we went on the big drive. I thought I was fine until literally we were trying to walk out the door, which we left kind of late. We didn't leave early in the morning like I wanted to, but it was fine. Um, when I, we were trying to go out the door, my sister just started, I mean, bawling, crying. And that made me cry, made my grandma cry, made all of us just be in one pile crying. So there was that. Um, then also on the drive, I felt like I could barely keep up with my mom in that minivan she was driving. It was getting ridiculous. Um, but we got there. Um, then we, when we got to my mom's, my mom lives literally in a mountain. There's no service, no cell phone service, and it's 30 minutes to go anywhere. It's awful. And, um, trying to move everything in, I think Amberlynn had, her foot was swollen at one point. I don't think she actually hurt it. I think she said she did, but I don't, I know she had like plantar facetus. She never remembered the second word for that. So, you know, I don't remember what is the actual thing for that, but she called it heel spur. It was not what it was. Um. I think that her foot was swollen from the altitude of driving because we had to drive up a mountain in Tennessee, come back down, and then go to, back up a mountain. So I think that that's what made her swell. And But she did fall at one point. I think that's when she really hurt her foot, but this was before she had fallen. So We had to put most of our big furniture into storage, um, except for our bed. That was the only thing that we got to put in our room because we needed that, obviously. Um, we had an appointment with a, her first weight loss program that she wanted to go to. It was called Ageless Weight Loss. Um, my stepdad's, one of his very good friends had done that. And... He lost so much weight on it, and it was, it was a really good little thing, but I know that we said we could afford the payments when the lady told us the payment every month, but at the end of it, she said the down payment had to be like, I think it was two grand. So then we, we told her that we would think about it, and I think we were thinking about saving up for it, but then on the way back from that appointment, my mom talked about this other weight loss program, so I think we just went ahead and tried that instead. Amberlynn also had some doubts because she felt like the calorie intake that they were giving for that was, there just wasn't enough. Uh, the stairs at my mom's house are super sketchy. They, my stepdad. Whoa, $2,000 to have a weight loss plan. I mean, do they, I'm just like, what does that include? Like, what do they do with you? Do they like design your meals? Do they do, do they give you the food? Like, is it kind of like a Nutrisystem kind of thing? Uh two thousand dollars i mean no like at, at this point in their lives i, I don't think that they really had two thousand dollars to spend on something like that i mean they just had to not really borrow but ask for a grant from the ex foster parent to be able to fund their trip dad so my step grandpa built that house it was his granny's house and that was just the front of the house the, like the bathroom and the kitchen that was like the whole house and they built the back of it so the stairs the living room and that bedroom downstairs so the stairs, I don't know if he just didn't measure right or what, but it was literally like going up a ladder. It was awful. Um, and then another thing with being at my mom's, my mom had a, it wasn't a clawfoot bathtub, but she had, it wasn't like a normal bathtub. I don't know how six months, you see it in the videos a lot. Um, Amber Lynn did not shower the whole time we were at my mom's. She did not like the bathtub. She refused to even try to get in. I think she, she was having a hard time getting her leg over it. It was the thing, because it, it was pretty high sides. And she just basically, you know, Bath. <laughs> she just 
you know, she washed her hair, I, like I'd help her wash her hair over the shower. Um, and she just kind of washed with washcloths and wore plenty of deodorant. That's, that's what she did. Um, I said, Amberlynn wants to go to the hospital over any and every little thing. Um, I don't know, it could just be anything. And she'd be like, I think I need to go to the hospital. And I would, she was kind of becoming a hypochondriac and I had to just be like, stop. <laughs> um, so this video is starting to get long. So I'll probably finish, oh my gosh, there's so much. There's only a couple more pages left for June. So I'll finish up June and then I'll probably make a part two. Um, okay, we started to watch my god sister a lot. That's who that little girl is in a lot of the videos. Um okay, so I don't really have too, too much to say about what she just said, but it wasn't as bad as what she told us about how things were in 2019 and what, and what Becky did and what Becky did to help her in that regard. But it's interesting to hear, I guess, now for the first time ever that it was going on when she was with Destiny too. Because, I mean, keep in mind, Destiny's like, what, 20, 20, not even 21 yet, can't even drink. I mean, see see how that kind of puts a damper on the relationship. I mean, you're 20 years old and you're having to provide assistance for your partner to, you know. So I can imagine, you know, that it wasn't too great of a situation that Destiny found herself in. She's probably like, well, I don't want to be with someone that, you know, can't even really live life basically like this. So I, I'd imagine that that added to the strain and tension of their relationship because destiny, destiny really would. And I, I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like, yeah, you have to consider like all the medical conditions and everything, but I mean, you know, 20, 20 year olds don't belong, like having to be responsible for those kind of things. Um, then we went to the next weight loss place with a, it was weight loss pills. It was fentramine. We both did this. Um, let me tell you, that stuff works. It's probably a little dangerous, but it does work. I remember the first day I took it, I took a whole one. I should not have. But I took a whole one because I wanted to make sure it worked. And, I mean, I have ADD. I don't have ADHD. I have ADD. And usually that kind of stuff, like, I don't, like, nothing makes me, like, hyper. You know, like, I don't know. And that, I literally, like, unpacked 98% of our room the day I took that whole one. And I didn't realize how many hours had gone by and I hadn't eaten anything. Like, I don't know. It was crazy. It was, it was a crazy day. But it gave me so much energy and I had no appetite and I had to literally make myself eat. So it did work. Um, Amber Lynn only took it, I think, for a couple days. It gave her, like, opposite symptoms that she was supposed to have. It made her sleepy. She didn't have any energy with it. And then she was also worried about her blood pressure, so that's why she stopped. Um, at one point she talks about how she's not going to ride the scooters anymore. That she needs to stop, even though she was complaining about her foot hurting. She was just too embarrassed to ride them in front of my family. Um, my brother, we started hanging out with him a lot. Oh, uh, we started planning my birthday, my 21st birthday cake smash photo shoot thing. We found, um, someone had posted that they had done it on Facebook and it was like, you know, a gone viral thing. And I just thought that was so cool. My mom was like, we should definitely do that. Um, this is also around the time my mom and Amber Lynn started getting into a lot of spats about stuff. Um, they just, they started arguing quite a bit. Amber Lynn's just, she's very set in her way or no way kind of deal. Um, I don't know. That's just, she, and she doesn't care. Like if she disrespects you basically like she really just does not care to have respect like we were at my mom's house living with her and she still was i know i was thinking the same thing i mean you literally are living with this woman for free using her resources you know i mean i would be kissing the ground that that woman walked on if i was in that situation i wouldn't be thinking to throw the attitude back in her face but i mean Kind of makes me think, like, how, what, like, what was the relationship like with Crystal's parents? I mean, did she just kind of walk all over them, or did they just, you know, listen to everything that she said? I mean, w did she feel entitled to it because of the way that she was used to it with Crystal's parents? That, that just, oh, wow. So she was fighting with the mom. Oh. On top of being a handful, on top of the fact that she needed help and assistance and stuff, she was being kind of a B-word on top of it. <laughs> yeah, I could see why Destiny wasn't rushing to propose. You know, like, I don't know, if it had been the other way around, I was not going to try to argue with her mom, you know? like It was like a respecting your elders kind of thing. Even though you're not a child, you should still respect your elders. Uh, and my mom was also very stubborn and very argumentative as well, so it just, it was a lot. Um, going back and watching these videos, 
um which i just watched like and then we saw a parallel with that in the following season with becky's mom a lot of arguing a lot of disrespect a lot of nastiness lots of little arguments so it's a continuing thing it's like each each of the parents like she gets in a fight with I don't know what you would call it, but um, I didn't watch each individual video. I watched like the, com I don't know, completions, com completions. I don't know what word you would call that, but where they're all together. <laughs> um, I don't remember the name exactly of the one I was watching, but it's in my library and I will tag them in the bottom. Um, but I watched the same one for the most part, just trying to go back and relive some of this. But watching these videos really made me miss my mom. I really wish Lexus could have met my mom. Um, I don't know. My mom just would have loved her. Um, we took my mom to the Cheesecake Factory. We were all excited about the cheesecake. That was when the Cheesecake Factory obsession began. You know, like we were just going so much. Um, at this point, she had 5,000 subscribers. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if they were living rent free with the mom, they would have had more money to put toward things like Walmart and Cheesecake Factory. And Cheesecake Factory isn't cheap. I mean, even like what was this seven years ago? I mean, prices have raised since then. I mean, like, an entree at the Cheesecake Factory now is over $20. I mean, yeah, I mean, there are probably some entrees you could get for like $16.99, $17.99, things like that. But Cheesecake Factory has always been a chain that was a little bit more, you know, a little, a little more uppity, a little bit more expensive. So, I mean, if they were going there habitually and they were getting the orange chicken entree, I mean... Her, Destiny, and you know they're both getting sodas. So, I mean, it, two entrees, two sodas, and then, I mean, if they did dessert or any or cheesecake, I mean, they were probably leaving there with a $50 bill every time. And then another thing, I don't know if I've already said this, maybe it was in the previous video, I never watched her videos when we were together, or even after we broke up. I, did, I just didn't, you know, like, when we were together, obviously, I was living the video. <laughs> so, you know, um... I didn't think to go back and watch her stuff. So some of the stuff that she would lie about that you guys, that she admitted to, whatever, that I'm letting out. Um, I didn't know that was going on. I didn't know what she was telling you guys. Um, ignore my dogs. They want to come in here and they're running around. Um, Amberlynn wanted me to be super involved in the vlogs, but I was either really busy or just awkward. Um, well, yeah, she probably wanted you to be more involved with the vlogs because she knows that side characters bring in more interactions and more money. It's like if she could get Destiny to interact more, I mean, she makes more money off of that. And then that money would go into Amber Lynn's pocket, not really Destiny's. So, uh, I mean, even after they broke up, I mean, she continued to make money off of Destiny because she was with Dana. And she was like, oh, like, I, I know that there, there's there's a video that Amberlynn has, and it has over 100,000 views. It's called, like, Meet Destiny's New Girlfriend. It's like, really, what that is, is if you really want to translate it and simplify it down, it's Amberlynn making money off of introducing someone else. <laughs> oh. When she started doing the mukbangs, when my mom was around, my mom really just didn't understand it. And I think they got into spats about it sometimes. So I think that's why she ended up only doing it basically when she was home alone or if it was just me and her or whatever. Um, oh, I wonder why Amber Lynn and the mom would fight about her doing mukbangs. Well, I mean, on one hand, you're trying to, t I mean, your daughter's dating someone that you're saving up $2,000 for to do some angel weight loss program or whatever she called it. And then you come home from work, paying the rent for both of them to live there. And you come into your kitchen and she's sitting there filming herself eating. Like, I could see how that's frustrating. <laughs> Oh, 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 and she's arguing with you. She's being mean. <laughs> you know what I would have told Amber Lynn if I was that mom at the time? <laughs> I noticed a lot, too, that Amber Lynn in her mukbangs would be like, well, I don't really like this that much, but then continues to eat it anyway and eat like a lot of it. Like, I'm like, if you don't like it, I don't know about you, but when I don't like something, I'm not going to touch it again. I'm not even going to attempt to be like, well, it's food. No. <laughs> Um, she announced that she only weighed 480 pounds at this point. Um, that Mexican restaurant that we went to a lot around this time, it was called El Cazador. It ended up burning down a couple of years ago and it was very sad. Um, we started job searching at this point. Um, and this is also when we got Jax. My mom found him. He How long of a period was it that they were living with the mom not working? 
because they just started to look for jobs now, but they were going out to eat and doing things. So were they living off of YouTube money at that point? Eh. It was dumped on the side of the interstate and my mom, there was like a divot on this highway interstate thing that her and my godmom would always take their lunch break at because they cleaned houses. They would take their lunch break right there. Um, and they could hear him meowing over there eating and their music going on the radio and they found him and she brought him back to us. Um, let's see. She says at some point that we were going to take the cats to the vet and that we had taken Wasabi to the vet. We, I never took these cats to the vet. Wasabi came with his shots and with Jax, I think once he was with me and Dana, I got, I went to the feed store and got his shots and just did them myself. Cause you can do that. <laughs> um, you can still do that. I'm pretty sure you can get your shots at tractor supply if you need to. Um, we did end up taking them to the vet. It was after me and her broke up. Cause I remember me and Dana were together when we did it. So the whole time we were together, we did not go to the vet. <laughs> I know she said that we did. And I didn't realize she was telling people that. So then I also noticed that Amber Lynn said something about being scared to be at the movie theater a lot. We went to the movie theater so much. It was getting ridiculous. Um, let's see. God, this is still taking so long. Well, it was more of a recent kind of thing. Amberlynn said that she's afraid to go to the movie theater because of, uh, you know, a, a potential tragedy that might happen. I mean, you know, fill in the blank with what that might be. But she's afraid to go to, like, open spaces like that. So, I don't know. Maybe back then in 2017, she wasn't really having those kind of thoughts. But, yeah, na nowadays, I mean, she, I think that she is... She, yeah, she's talked about it recently that she's afraid to go to movie theaters. We've not got too much left. Um, we went to a party at my mom's friend's house. Um, we were there. We were getting, it was going to be kind of late there. And we ended up kind of like leaving abruptly because the girl's house that we were at, her, it was actually her husband. It caused a lot of stuff. Um, he kept being super rude to Amberlynn. Like he was saying some just vulgar stuff to her about her weight and stuff. And then he started hitting on her and saying that he wanted to, I'm not going to say this word on YouTube, but you know, he wanted to. Have sexual relations with her i guess is what you want to say he kept saying it we ended up leaving it was a big thing and it was what it was it was a lot of drama um you guys kept saying that she had diabetic sores i don't know they were mosquito bites i have scars all over my legs from mosquito bites um we started hanging out with my cousin cameron a lot cameron he's probably a little he's probably the same height as me if not a little bit taller now he was kind of short in the videos we got hired for the job that we were going to be having but we couldn't start they said the soonest would have been august but we didn't know what time in august so um, I start to eat a lot of cream cheese and cucumber sandwiches that Amberlynn starts talking about. Um, I tried them at a baby shower once and I, I loved them. So I just, you know, it is what it is. Okay, this is the last bit of June and I'm going to stop because this video is going to be like 50 minutes long. Um, Amberlynn didn't want to get a real job. She only wanted to do YouTube. Um... Well, I can imagine. I mean, if you were assisting her with washing her hair and everything and she had trouble getting up the stairs and all this other stuff, I mean, yeah, I can imagine she probably at that point didn't really want to be working a traditional job like that. Probably because I don't it was probably too painful. I don't know, we just kind of went back and forth on it a lot, but then she really ended up liking the job that we were going to have, so she ended up taking it obviously. Uh, we tried to get her a medical card for Kentucky at one point because she was having some health concerns, but you had to have a job. You have to have a job to get a medical card. You can't just get it and you have to have proof of income. So, and we, I didn't have a job yet. So it was what it was. She started talking about ASMR a lot at this point and ASMR freaks me out. I do not like it. It overwhelms the crap out of me. <laughs> um, you also see her vlogging in the car a lot without me being in there. It's because we went, we would go to, it didn't matter if it was Walmart, whatever store we were at. If when we were done shopping and decided we were deciding to leave, it was me at the checkout with everything and her going to the car and sitting and waiting. That's just how it was. Um, so that is... Yeah, I mean, when you're 20 years old, you shouldn't be having to put up with a partner that does all this. I mean, needing... needing yeah, they haven't even been together, what, like a year now? And I mean, like, listen to all that Destiny was doing for her. And then just like even little stuff, I mean, like her fighting with the mom, her not helping with the groceries, her not carrying anything, her not wanting to, I could see how this got old very quickly. And I think that when she was with Crystal's parents, a lot of this was kind of just taken care of for, because I think that those parents in season two were just kind of, they, they, they did whatever she wanted. It was just kind of like, you know. Whatever, whatever Amber wants, whatever Amber wants. And I'd imagine like 
all of this that's going on throughout this whole story that she's telling, it's probably very stressful. And I mean, when people who have these kind of issues get stressed out, they eat. And then it's like a vicious cycle. It's like, well, you know, you cope by eating and then you're stressed out because you're morbidly obese. And then it's like the the, the two issues feed each other. It is January to June. So I'll do July to December, obviously, in the next one. But this video is going to be really long. So, all right. I'll see you guys in part two. All right, so this wasn't that juicy, honestly. Um, all in all, I mean, she's really she's really emphasizing the type of person that Amber Lynn was behind the scenes, and I guess the, the biggest takeaway is we found out that Destiny wasn't really involved with any of this. I mean, everything that we were shown on YouTube was from Amber's point of view. Destiny really didn't have a hand in any of the commentary or any, any of the editing. I mean, Amber would just take out her phone and start filming, and Destiny was kind of like, all right, whatever, whatever you want to put online, and she wasn't going back, and she wasn't watching it she really doesn't know know really like what her presence was on youtube so that was kind of interesting to find out i mean there were some details throughout this that were kind of interesting to figure out but, like as a whole i feel like a lot of this could have been shortened i don't think that this needed to be 51 minutes long but all right we'll wait for next week i think that she's doing these every week so if she's uploading this on Monday night, said imagine we'll get part two next Monday. So yeah, we have that to look forward to. All right, everyone, we have made a safe and secure landing back on Mother Earth. I would now like to take a moment to thank you for making it to the end of today's long, long journey. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a thumbs up, some of your thoughts in the comments, and take the subscribe button to a Chinese buffet. Let them have whatever they want. Stay there a few hours. Why not? This is Jordy blasting off. I will see you next time in the Amberverse.